Hey there folks, welcome to another voice actor interview and today we have a very special guest as we always do. This actor has been in a number of shows, games, and movies to come out of the New York scene, notably in a lot of stuff from good old 4Kids productions like One Piece, Dinosaur King, Viva Pinata, and he's even been cropping up in Pokemon since like 2004. And if you fancy yourself a bit of classic radio, you might know him from the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop on Teaneck, New Jersey's W. FDUFM. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure to get to speak with the host with the most, David Ghost E. Wills. Or, as I used to say, I got dino DNA. <laughs> yep. So, good to speak with you. Good to speak with you, too. We've already, like, knocked one thing off the list right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, long. Well, that, thanks for that introduction. Uh, it makes makes me sound like I've done a lot. Okay, I hope I remember it all. <laughs> I, uh, it's been some time. I've, from what I've seen on like uh, behindthevoiceactors.com and a couple of other things, you you've had a pretty good memory of things like that. But in, in case you uh, there are some holes in or some gaps, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to help out with uh, some stuff okay. here and there. Because you know some people remember things more than others. So yeah. So, uh, let's... yeah, well, I can tell you that when it comes to the shows, uh, I never watch them mm -hmm. and it's not because I don't like them. It's just that if I'm involved, somehow they don't seem special anymore. You know, I feel like oh, I've brought it down to my crummy level. <laughs> so I, I don't want to watch, you know, I'll watch it and see other people and I go, oh, this is wonderful. And when I hear my voice, I go, oh, forget it. Mm -hmm. Amateur hour, turn it off. You know, so that's kind of how I'm. I am with stuff like that. Yeah, I feel the same way sometimes where I'm like, oh, man, that was me. Like, if I do narration for something or show up in a mm -hmm. project, it's like, well, that was fun to do in the moment. But when I look back on it, it's like, oh, man, either I could have done this so much better. It's like, oh, that that's me. I hope nobody notices that's me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope in my old age I can break these things out and then go, oh, I I, had I only known I was that good? And then I'll <laughs> die from excitement or something. <laughs> Oh, well, that's great. But uh, let's so let, let's get this uh, start off with the uh, the first question I got for you today. Uh, so, OK, how did you personally get started in voiceover and what were your some of your inspirations for like characters and things like that? Well, when I was a kid, I mean, I loved cartoons and I loved watching at the time in the 1970s, the classic cartoons were on television like after school so bugs mm -hmm. bunny and uh the old max fleischer black and white popeye cartoons those were really the kind of cartoons i was most interested in i used to read up on them i bought books about animation and so i would sit around and now of course as a as a youngster i my voice is really high so i couldn't really get the voices down but i would sit around doing my best bugs bunny impression as a child you know mm -hmm. um it wasn't until later it's like you have to have a certain you have to be a certain age i think to pull off the me hey, what's up doc you know you that have to pretty good actually thank you thank you <laughs> yeah you get to be old and you're like oh now i can do it um <laughs> but yeah so so those classic cartoons the things that were happening in the 70s like um scooby-doo and stuff i did watch that as well mm -hmm. but then Sometime in the 90s or late 90s, yeah, a friend of mine mm -hmm. got some information about a show that was on MTV called Celebrity Deathmatch. Uh -huh. So he said, hey, you do celebrity Im impressions, mm -hmm. so why don't you audition for the show? And I said, uh, wow, yeah, I, it'd be great. And it was a very easy audition process. It was so primitive in the <laughs> world before uh, the internet took mm -hmm. off that basically they would fax over a list of the celebrities that they wanted to have fight. And then they would give you a phone number to call and you would audition over the phone. You'd call the answering machine and it would be like, you've reached the MTV animation audition line. Please leave your audition. So I would, you know, I would do it. And you could record it three or four times to get it exactly right. And then they would cast you based 
off that, listening back to the answering machine message. So for a couple of years there, I was, I'd get a list and it would say Hugh Grant or so. So I'd go to Blockbuster Video and I'd try to rent like as many Hugh Grant movies as possible and cram and watch them. <laughs> and then um, and then audition over the phone and I'd get the job and then I'd drive into the city or at that point just take a bus. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I did that for, I guess, two years, two seasons on that show. And that was the beginning mm -hmm. of the slow descent into uh, poverty that I <laughs> that I found myself. That was I went the wrong. I mean, I talk about going the wrong path. I mean, I could have gone one way and gone right into the business world and kept my head about me and forgotten about show business. And I would be speaking to you from my palatial estate, where <laughs> I would have uh, you know beautiful women uh, lounging around the pool as I speak, but unfortunately, no, I'm sitting here in a, a quiet antiseptic room, <laughs> uh, all because I made that one wrong decision. <laughs> and I wouldn't have it any other way. Real well, thank you. Realistically, you would, if that did happen, we, we probably wouldn't be speaking right now. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't have time for anybody. If, exactly. uh, uh, I, yeah, I would just, I would just have a big smile on my face 24 hours a day. Life is great, but that's okay. I'm glad we're talking. <laughs> I don't mingle with you riffraff. Voiceovers? <laughs> What kind of an idiot would get For into sure. that? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so uh, what what characters were you in that celebrity show? On a, a celebrity deathmatch? Yeah. I was it was different celebrities every week. So uh, I did I did do Hugh Grant and I did um gosh, I, I Nicolas Cage and I did members of NSYNC mm -hmm. and oh, wow. members of KISS. So that's what I remember about that best was that was around the time that Britney Spears first got really popular and MTV celebrity Deathmatch was on after TRL. Mm -hmm. So I was recording it onto my VHS tapes mm -hmm. and I would set the timer to go off. And I always got the last five minutes <laughs> of TRL. So Britney Spears song sometime, I think is the name of it. Som sometimes was, was always the number one song. So somewhere in my, uh, collection of videotapes. I have 60 videotapes that all begin with Britney Spears singing sometimes uh, before we get into the episode of uh, Celebrity Deathmatch. And the first time that I was ever, like my name was ever in the credits on a TV show, it was misspelled. And that really set the tone, I think, for the rest of my <laughs> career. Because every place I've gone to, they've misspelled it, which causes all sorts of confusion on uh, behind the voice actors in those places. It says on on um, IMDb or one of those, it says sometimes credited as David Willis, sometimes David Wilson, <laughs> sometimes David Wilkeberry. And I'm like, well, it wasn't my choice. <laughs> that was just somebody not knowing. That's all. I think you also get confused with like uh, another guy, Dave Willis. I think the, the some guy from like Adult Swim. Yes, yes, right. Some guy who's much more successful than me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and I used to get his fan mail. People would find my email and write letters of talking about how much they loved Adult <laughs> Swim. And and then I had to, you know, imagine having that job of going, I'm sorry, I'm not that person, but <laughs> have you have you seen Funky Cops on, <laughs> on Channel 5 in your town? And they were like, who is this schmuck? I don't want to talk to this guy. I, I was looking for David Willis. Uh, boy. Yeah. I was the poor man's David Willis for a number of people. <laughs> oh, I've, I've never seen Funky Cops, by the way, but I have heard about it, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I was on that. I, I was one of the two stupid cops. There were like <laughs> these two really dumb cops who were not the leads. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't even know how long that lasted. I guess it was maybe one season or something. Yeah, I think it didn't last very long, which uh, kind of reminds me of uh, another show that you did. I was going to say one thing first, but this is a perfect transition. and I'm going to take the opportunity. Uh, F-Zero. Uh, do you remember F-Zero GP Legend? Oh, well... It Everybody else remembers it better than me, but yes, I remember that show. And I, it's, uh, I, I mean, we did the whole season, but I don't think it aired. So I think did. we dubbed the whole thing. So there was like, apparently there were 52, no, not apparently, because there were 52 episodes, but only 14 or 15 made it to air. But you say you did the whole thing? Pretty sure, because, well, I know we did the big reveal. 
Uh So I don't know if that was in the last episode or not, but we did the big reveal where, spoiler alert, (laughs) the, the guy who was the bartender turns out to be Captain Falcon. Mm-hmm. Um, what I re- all I remember about that show was that there was supposed to be. I actually don't have like a super deep voice, so right. it's kind of hard for me to get really down down deep like that. And since I was playing uh, two characters, when I played Captain Falcon, I had to play him very robotic because mm-hmm. they didn't want it to be obvious that I was also the bartender guy. So I kind of played it with no emotion. And almost, yeah, like a robot. <laughs> and I remember reading a comment on one of those things, like, he sounds so stiff and wooden. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that's, that's what they asked me to do. They, I did, didn't want me to sound like the bartender, whoever, I forget his name, Pete or Carl or whatever. Hi, Bert. The usual? Ultra calf. I saw the big race on television yesterday. Tough loss. Yes, you must be pretty concerned about Jody. She never would have crashed if it wasn't for me, Bert. You didn't mean to knock Zoda into her. Don't beat yourself up. Maybe you just got a little bit too caught up in beating Zoda. Maybe you should go see Jody in the hospital and let her know how badly you feel about what happened. How did you get the maglet to start up this machine? I'm not telling you anything. But hey, what are you doing? Children aren't allowed to drive. It's illegal and extremely dangerous. Is this some kind of trick? I'm not turning you in because I knew your father. Your dad was a good man. He would have wanted you to leave this place, to follow all your dreams, and to live in Mute City. I tried watching a few episodes for research to see how far I could get. I knew I was going to be disappointed because the dub just ends, but, uh, like, I'm just going off of, like, what has been recorded off of the Fox box and put onto YouTube. And it's Uh. just not, it's not a very optimal way to watch the show because there's like episodes missing and it cuts to commercial like half the time. And it's, it's not a great way to watch it. So, but there's literally no other way to watch it, but. Well, I mean, in a perfect world, these things would come out on, well, I guess they wouldn't now. DVDs are kind of passe, but uh, you'd think that somewhere, somebody must be, Somebody must have it somewhere on a hard drive. Yeah. You know, there's, I knew they used to burn like DVDs of it all the time. So somebody somewhere has got that stuff. Yeah. Who knows where it is? But it does exist. But you do stand out being like Captain Falcon. You are like the only, at first and so far, like only official English voice for the character. And uh, he's part of like a Nintendo game, I'm sure you know, but nothing has been done with that series since you guys dubbed that show. It, it's just been dead ever since because like there was a tie in video game and it flopped. And uh-huh. yeah, the series has just been missing in action since F Zero GP Legend. And that's what well, that signifies it. Yeah, that's kind of how I roll. You know, I, I, uh, I put my stink on these projects <laughs> and then they. Uh... <laughs> they never get off the ground, and they, you know, I, if you really want to end something, hire me. That seems <laughs> that seems to be how it works. So I will put this in like somewhere as advertisement for this review. David Wills killed F Zero. <laughs> yeah, I killed it. I killed it. <laughs> you I, you know, it, it was one of those things. I think I played another character in it too. Didn't I play like a comical character in that show? There was yeah. some like some other character. He was a dude called Super Arrow actually. Yeah. That I enjoyed playing. I really enjoyed that. I am Super Arrow, champion of fair play. That's my way. I didn't realize you were a superhero. You look more like a super zero. Let's get off! As you know, I am a superhero, and as a superhero, I have a super feeling that you've got a super special surprise from a super special someone waiting for you downstairs. Uh, yes, that's exactly it, Super Arrow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, hmm. You know, anything like, you know, really stupid and over the top, that's, uh, that's a lot of fun to play. So <laughs> I remember that character more fondly than Captain Falcon. Although people have written me, and I mean, I literally bumped into somebody for real mm-hmm. who 
was like a huge fan of Captain Falcon. And I'm thinking, is this, is this going to be my legacy, Captain Falcon? Like, I don't even remember that much about it other than I would say things like, good race. You know, I, I didn't really have much dialogue, uh, you know, as, as Captain Falcon. But yeah, I think, yeah, Captain Falcon is like uh, in the series, well, in the game, he's in a fighting game series called Super Smash Brothers, if that sounds familiar to you at all. Uh, it's basically... No. It's just a bunch of, like, Nintendo characters like Super Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, and a bunch of other things getting together to beat the tar out of each other. And Captain Falcon represents the F-Zero series, and he's the only representative from that series. And he's, that's the only thing he's been showing up in constantly throughout the years, and people just know who Captain Falcon is. It's, your, your voice isn't in the game, but everyone knows who Captain Falcon is because he's it's like oh he's the guy in this video game and his series is also never getting another game it's sort of a running gag with millions and millions of people who know captain falcon so yeah when i so saw so now that so now that you tell me this so i i take everything back and i say captain falcon playing captain falcon was the highlight of my <laughs> career in fact Every waking moment of my life, I try to live up to the ideals, the mysterious robotic ideals of Captain Falcon. And I try to approach everything with as little emotion and uh, substance as possible so that one day I can attain that state of bliss that evidently Captain Falcon was in because uh, he just never cracked a smile. He just never, <laughs> he didn't have much, didn't have much going for him except he evidently was uh, fast. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I saw when I was looking up your roles and I was like, Captain Falcon? Get from the from the F Zero anime? That's crazy. And then when I saw him, it's like, well, nothing's really going on with him right now, but uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think down the line he was gonna have more to do. And I think I think he did have more to do, but yes, I he did. I know we did I know we did the reveal. I remember that. That was a big storyline, and uh, I'm su uh, it just was never uh, heard from again. So, well, only a select few have seen those. Ep I'm one of the the lucky few. We happy few have mm -hmm. seen those moments where Captain Falcon shocked the world by revealing to himself that he was, uh, you know, really, really adept at mixing drinks on the side. <laughs> so. It's probably what he does now, anyways. Yeah, Not getting exactly. Any new games, <laughs> but uh, yeah, re revive Captain Falcon and hire me, and I'll play Captain Falcon the Lush. That'll be the new <laughs> series. I'd love to see that personally. Sure, <laughs> but uh, let's uh, let's move on to something. Uh, so going into Pokemon, because this is what I call Pokey Month. I always do a thing at the end where I speak to someone ah. who is in Pokemon, whether it was a big role or a little role. But uh, I will say there, the first character that you played in Pokemon was a dude ironically called, not ironically, but appropriately enough, called Captain Stern in uh, like 2003, 2004. But the only reason I know that is because I had the episode on tape when I was younger. And that was uh -huh. just one of the episodes on tape that I had. And I just remembered Captain Stern. And then later on, you played a character called Noland. If, if, does that ring a bell? You know, all of these characters kind of run together in my I feel like I played basically the same two characters all the time in Pokemon I either played like a real jerk mm -hmm. a guy who was like uh, yeah as soon as we get a hold of him we'll crush him and that, that, that. that guy or then I played an old guy who was like yes my son this Pokemon I I've raised him I, I, I seem to play those <laughs> two was so uh, over and over again they just have different names but was Nolan one of those two <laughs> Actually, no. He was like, oh, a, oh, okay. He was like a really cool dude. Actually, he was like he's a little less hammy than Tyrannal Hasselberry was, but he he was just like this cool dude, cool mechanic dude, and he had like a legendary Pokemon called Articuno, and Ash fought him, and he was basically he was a big deal because he started a whole arc where Ash fought like a bot a bunch of really strong guys. And, but no, like, Noland was, like, really cool and always stood out to me because he was, like, the first guy who had, like, a super rare Pokemon on his team. And it was also, like, the last thing, like, just where, like, four kids ended their time with Pokemon. So that also stood out to me as well. But, yeah, like, Noland was really cool. 
Well, I'm, I'm sad to say the character that you thought was really cool and that stood out is one that I don't remember <laughs> at all. I don't, I, I mean, I'm sure if I watched it, I would go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, okay. Yeah. Hey, what about you, Nolan? I sure don't recall hearing your introduction. Yeah, I thought the day had finally come where I didn't need one. I can see that's not the case, so I'm Nolan, the guy in charge. Which makes me the factory head. Well, <laughs> secrets out. Wait, so that was you we saw flying alongside Articuno yesterday? Yeah, I was just doing a little night flying. But the most amazing part of it is that you captured Articuno. That's the strongest Pokemon you can catch. No, this is a wild Pokemon we're talking about here. We're just friends. You're just friends? Yeah. Yeah. You see, we met up back when I was test flying a plane. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the name Articuno or whatever seems to ring a bell. But uh, it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it would come to this where I wouldn't remember uh, hardly anything I've done. That's but okay. It gets better. <laughs> I'm always I'm always happy to do it. I mean, if they call me in, I, I did Pokemon last year, I think, or yeah. a year before. So when they call me in to do it, uh, I'm always happy to, to come in and... and uh, you know, knock, knock a few out. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually funny. So when you, so you played Noland and then like years and years later, when you came back, you played a hunter or a smuggler. His name was Dolan. And yeah, he was basically like the hunter character. It was like, ah, I'm going to catch all these Pokemon and sell them for profit. And then, yeah, you played quite a few old dudes in, uh, the yeah, same yeah. series as well. You're actually in a clip on Pokemon's YouTube channel that has over almost 5 million hits almost. And it's it's crazy. The champ must be challenging Halucha for forest champion. <sighs> it's hard to say. I guess the answer is hidden in the outcome of this battle. The champ is encountering it all. Why? I'm pretty sure it's gauging just how firm Halucha's resolve is. Ah, so they're sizing each other up. That's right. But uh, yeah, in most recently, you showed up in uh, the last series, Sun and Moon. I believe, yeah, you were a Pokemon hunter, like Pokemon yeah. Hunter D was his name. And he was trying to steal like this really big legendary Pokemon again. <laughs> Even a legendary Pokemon doesn't stand a chance against a super hotshot Pokemon hunter like me. Come on, give it up. You don't want to see a grown up get all mad, do you? Do ya? What is she doing now? Seismitoad, use focus blast. Yeah, I was a jerk. I was yeah. a jerk. Uh, you know, I, I'm ty it's typecasting. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm either a complete jerk or uh, I'm old. You know, you get to be a certain age. You know, when I was in my 20s, I never had these issues. But you know, mm -hmm. when you get to when you when you get to be past 40, suddenly uh, it, the roles are like, well, we have this grandfather. Wait, grandfather, come on! I'm only like 40, 43 years old. Well, now I'm older than that. But yeah, uh, yeah, I did play that hunter. I do remember that because that was recent. Mm -hmm. There was a when I was really uh, moving and shaking over at Four Kids. I seemed to play. Ah, that guy over and over again, like a million shows. I was, I was always a, a jerk. I was, yeah, typecast as a jerk or an old man or a freak. Uh, I did a lot of freaks. You know, if you want to have like some weird freakish over the top, like Hasselberry's kind of a freaky character, then I'm your guy. Yeah, jerks, that... freaks, and old men. <laughs> Hasselberry always stood out to me. I never saw that series of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, but he always stood out to me as that weird dinosaur dude with the weird hair and like the southern accent. But he he was like, I remember I saw like a thing on Twitter just the other day where someone said like all these things shouldn't have worked, but it does for some reason. And the voice is just great too. I was like, yeah, Tyranno House of Berry's great. <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, I'm glad people like that character. I I like that character because for me, just on a weirdly technical level. It's much easier to do a voice with a higher pitch for me than it is with a voice with a lower register. Although people like, you know, a deeper voice. A lot of people like those characters. Um, it's just easier for me, like something like Fergie Fudgehog or mm. Hasselberry or something like that, or really uh, like no effort to do those kind of voices. Oh, of course. Uh, there was another po Pokemon character you played. It was actually an actual Pokemon. Its name, it's its a little rock creature. Its name is Carbink. Does, does that ring a bell to you? I mean, you're telling me these things like this is all a revelation to me. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm sure... 
I, I totally trust what you're saying, and, and it's, it sounds similar to something, and maybe I, I'm sure I did. You know, I've never seen it. I don't think I've ever watched uh, a single episode of, of Pokemon, but um, I take your word for it. I, was I any good? What did I, I do in it? I would say you were pretty good because you were like you were like the esteemed royal council, and you were the one that could talk amongst the other Pokemon of the same species. And you're just like, oh, the princess, she must be safe. We must not let her roam too far away. The princess looks to be in a big hurry. Could it be Xerneas has been found? <laughs> Mort, Allotrope, go after the princess. We mustn't let anything happen. Princess, we're so glad you're all right. But it came at the perfect time. This Pokemon is in trouble. Well, actually, we're the ones who are in trouble. Yeah, it's them. I, I want to make sure. I just want to make sure to confirm all this because there is a Wikipedia page out there that will not confirm certain things unless we hear it straight from the actor's mouth. But I can send like a link later and just play it back. It's like, hey, is that you? And you could say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's me. And that might work. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good with that. Like, because that's happened before, where I, there is some show, or I, maybe it was a Yu-Gi-Oh, where for years people said I was this voice, and I think I've even signed. Like, people have sent me cards and stuff to sign, and I've done it. And then, like, I heard the recording, and I'm like, oh, that's not me. That's somebody else. Yeah. So whoever sent cards for me to sign, you might have utterly worthless cards. They may even be <laughs> worth less now I was because the wrong say... person has signed them. Yeah. <laughs> Originally, they were worthless, but now they're just worth less. <laughs> right. They're worth less than worthlessness because I've signed them. You know, it's like uh, having the wrong guy. You know, it's like the, the a baseball from the World Series uh, signed by Joe Namath. You know, it's like, well, why is he signing that? He was he didn't play baseball. So that's what it's that's. Yeah, that's kind of what it's like, I suppose, for those poor people. But, you know, I guess it's on me. Like, I should have kept track of this. I never, you know, I, I never really thought about it. I Somebody once asked me what, you know, what my memory was, my overriding memory of working at poor kids. Mm -hmm. And the number one memory was looking for parking. <laughs> because I was always driving in and it was always like, where am I going to park? And I got to get there at least an hour ahead of time so I can drive around. And finally I found like a really good uh, parking garage and there was a video store, like DVDs were being, it was the beginning of DVDs going out of fashion and they were being marked down to like $6 or $7. Mm -hmm. And there was a store on the corner a couple blocks away from where I would go and record and I was always very excited because I was going to record it for kids. And afterwards, on my way to get my car, I would stop off at this video store and I would get like King Kong, the deluxe <laughs> edition of King Kong for like six bucks, you know, nice. or, uh, you know, some classic old horror movie or something. So those are like my really, really big memories. And then, you know, people will ask me, oh, you played this character in Pokemon. I'm like, wow, I have no I have no idea what, the, <laughs> what what that is, but I'm sure I did. I'm sure I was there for hours too, doing it. You know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of things that you probably won't remember, uh, do you remember anything about One Piece, the show? Oh, of with course. The pirates? Yes. Yeah. Well, there there you go. One of those high voiced characters. So that was I. Well, I did two. I may have done more, yeah. but I know I did Captain Buggy. Yes. So that was an easy. You know, that's in my. And when I did that, I was just trying to imitate. Um, uh, Mark Hamill's Joker, you know, Ooh. I was, I was doing like, uh, cause I, I thought about that and I can't really do Mark Hamill's Joker, but it was sort of in that world, you know? Yeah. So you want to come here? Well, ew. you clobber me. Don't make me laugh. This is the end of the road for all three of you. Understand? Ah, the cannon's pointed right at us. Ah, ah, it's loaded. With one of my buggy balls, talk about a low blow! <laughs> Stop it at once! This isn't funny! <laughs> so that was that character. And then Arlong was another one of those that kills my voice mm -hmm. after uh, 20 minutes or so. I think they put an effect on it to make it sound like he was underwater or <laughs> they, something they along also... those lines. They also did that with Buggy. There was like this weird double double effect, usually when he got like really ticked off. But yeah. I'm sorry, but who are you again? You look kind of familiar. Was it Bug or Bugsy? 
No, wait! Booger! It was Booger the Clod, right? You sideshow phony! It's not Booger the Clod! It's Buggy the Clown! Buggy the Clown! Ugh, should be Buggy Bad Breath. Ugh, no joke! That's enough from all of you! Ah, okay. <laughs> there was a TV show, V. I don't know if you ever saw this show. It was from the early 80s. Mm, and... Familiar. Okay, well, you need to watch the show V. They have a mini series. They made a TV series out of it. Aliens land and uh, they eat people. But anyway, mm -hmm. on this show, in the first mini series, they talked with that doubling effect. And when they went to regular TV series, they dropped it because I guess it was too expensive to do. And it always sort of stuck in my craw because, you know, if you establish that they're going to have this effect on their voice. And then when you bring them back to do a series and they don't, we're going to notice. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, Captain Buggy, I've, I've seen a couple of those. I think they put it at, wasn't there a DVD of One Piece? There are a few DVDs of the four yeah. kids dub. Yeah, they're out of print, obviously, but yeah. Oh, I know it's hated. I, I know. I, I've seen the YouTube videos <laughs> where people go off on One Piece and... <laughs> You know, and it's all blamed on four kids. And, and I, I just want to say to them, I, I was interviewed about this before, actually. And I will say it's, you know, it's not four kids. It was network standards and practices. Thank you. Who would, who would say you can't do this because we would record. I mean, there was a lot of stuff we record that it's never got aired or they would make us change um, you know, like somebody had to have a water pistol or something. I mean, yep. Yeah, so these were all coming back from the network, you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess indirectly you could say, well, four kids, you know, had the deal with the network. But, you know, there's no way you could predict what they were going to say suddenly couldn't yeah. be done anymore. I was brought in. That was good money to be brought in to just re-record one line mm -hmm. in, because a, a network didn't like it. You know, they would say, <laughs> oh, no, we can't say we can't say this. It sounds like he's talking about killing or he sounds like he's talking about dying. So we have to say something else. You know, I'm going to punch you into the netherworld, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so it, I mean, you'd be brought back in to re-record one line. And then years later, somebody has a YouTube video. Oh, this terrible writing. Not our fault. Not <laughs> our fault. That's That was a network would always have us do that. Thank I say you. us. I mean, I was just, I was just a, you know, freelance guy working at, at four kids. I was not uh, yeah. on staff or anything, but you know, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be on the soapbox for four kids. I, they, there was a lot of great, great work happening there. So yeah, I'll die on that hill too. Like I'll join yeah. you. I It'll be the both of us. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> there was like, a, uh, to bring up Arlong, there's like one quote where like uh, he says to like one of the character's mothers, like he, he was going to throw her in a dungeon and she he originally like killed her. But yeah, he was like, how about a nice cozy room in a dungeon for the rest of your days? And then uh, immediately after he's like, if you can't pay the cash, then you're out with the trash and feel free to quote me. Yeah. And me and my <laughs> brother just lose it when we hear that line <laughs> yeah you know i i've adapted stuff before and that a lot of these lines are like because you have to sort of fit the flap if it's already you know it's already in another language so yeah you kind of have to write dialogue i'm not telling you anything you don't know i'm sure but for people who might not know you have to write dialogue that fits the flap so they're other languages have these pauses and things so you wind up with really strange bits of dialogue <laughs> and that's one of them clearly um it's but fun, you though. know if you can sell it which i guess i did as our long yeah um i i know the dino dna thing uh, that's another one that people will quote from uh hassleberry mm -hmm. i i didn't even remember that that was even said on the show but apparently i i must have said it a hundred times because people always say oh yeah dino dna <laughs> i go okay sounds good to me well i'll believe you on that uh, just one sec. I have to let my dog out of my room real quick. I'll be right back. Just a second. You're going to put him out with the trash? Well, looky here. So these are your daughters. Yes, that's right. I want you to promise me you won't touch a hair on their heads. No problem. It's you I'll hurt. Now get up, you lousy human. <sighs> How about a nice room in a dungeon? 
for the rest of your day. My girls, please <laughs> spare them. <laughs> if you can't pay the cash, then you're out with the trash. And feel free to quote me. Yeah! Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I just did a little bit of our long there oh, while you <laughs> as best <laughs> do, as I could. Do, do I don't again. remember. <laughs> do. I was just said, "You're gonna take him out with the trash." I couldn't remember how. He, I don't know how he sounds our long. I'd have that, to that listen was, to it again. That was pretty good. If, if you could say like, "If you can't pay the cash, then you're out with the trash." <laughs> yeah, there you go. If you can't pay the cash, then you're out with the trash. <laughs> I guess I don't remember how it went, but that was pretty. I'd have much to watch it. it. But yeah. That was that was great, but yeah, like you said about the four kids thing, I will say that people are pretty happy about your buggy. I, I've seen, I saw some comments just last night on a couple of clips, were like, you know what, buggy is really good. He sounds like he's, you know, quote unquote, actually trying. But you know what I mean when when I say that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I enjoyed that kind of. Uh, I there, it's easier for me to do. I have more flexibility when with with a higher pitched character. Uh, I'm sort of constrained a bit with a deeper voiced character, but yeah, I like that character. If I can go nuts and be way, way over the top, like I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I, and speaking of which, uh, I might as well just get into uh, Viva Pinata if we can talk about that for a little bit. Open your mouth and say, ah. On the next Viva Pinata, Fergie uh -oh. gets bad news. Fergie must face his fear and actually visit Party Central. <laughs> This usually doesn't happen till they see my bell. An all-new Viva Pinata, today at 9.30. When, when I found your radio show for the first time, which we'll talk about a little later on, I was like, wait a second, this is, uh, this is Fergie Fudgehog. He, he doesn't sound anything like that, because I, he, when, when you say you can't do the deep voice as well, I guess I guess your voice is somewhere in the middle, I guess. But when I, hear I guess it, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I hear it, it's like, and today we're doing another top 10 hits from the 70s. It's like, oh, this guy sounds like he's been around the block a few times. And then when you played, I wrote this down, you played a song on the radio, the your show, called Caress Me Baby, and then you messed it up and played your own music instead, and then you kind of did like a little flub, like a little Jerry Lewis sounding thing, and it's like, there it is. There's the oh, Fergie. Oh yes. There well, it yeah, is. Fergie. Fergie does have uh, some Jerry. There was a lot of Jerry Lewis in in Fergie Fudgehog, and in fact, there, I, there was like a whole separate recording session. Could be a all that kind of stuff was all <laughs> Fergie. You know, it was all Jerry Lewis. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to a party. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit of that. That that was such a that was like a really really fun show to do. I'm I'm saddened that that didn't take off like the way it should have. Yeah. I, I think the game. I don't know. Maybe it was the case where the game looked like it was for little little kids, but then when you played it, it was not for little little kids. Yeah. And then people who were older would have thought it was for little kids, and then not played it because of that, but really it was meant for them. And the show had kind of grown up humor. It had all these allusions to classic Hollywood and we did a Beatles pastiche and uh -huh. there was uh, that tribute to Psycho, which is strange on mm -hmm. that program. Yeah. And uh, a Silence of the Lambs uh, bit we did on there. There's a lot of crazy stuff on that program. So that one, I've seen most of those. Yeah. Because I, I, I really enjoyed uh, that particular program. I, I'm not as well remembered for that as I am Captain Falcon. Oh, you <laughs> but should be. This, this, that's, this is that, like that was my... Role. That was my big, uh, yeah. That was my big, uh, my big show. At least in my mind, anyway. Yeah, but I mean, the the Viva Pinata game. I will bring this up real quick. Like uh, in another game that those same guys who made Viva Pinata made, there's like a disc of Viva Pinata, and it says like on the bottom, it's like winner of the best game no one played award sequel now available. But uh, <laughs> 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 but Viva Pinata. I remember it up in Canada because it was also a co-production. Uh, between like Canadian channel YTV so it kind of counted as Canadian content that show aired well into like 2011 2012 and 
I still have like episodes of it on tape because I still recorded stuff on tape until like 2011. But Viva Pinata was like a daily, daily thing. Like if I was at school, it's like, well, if no, if I was at home from school, it's like, well, Viva Pinata is on, so it won't be all bad. It's not all daytime television, but uh, but Fergie, oh, I, good. yeah. I would also say that like Fergie was the star of the show. There were like four different people that could all argue for like being the star, but it was always Fergie for me. And uh, to speak about Viva Pinata itself real quick, uh, it is, it's what happens when a bunch of friends gain way too much power and they're able to share their dumb jokes with the rest of the world. And I'd be lying if I said Viva Pinata didn't have a hand in shaping part of my humor today. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. I would wear that badge proudly because that was a smart show. We had great writers on that show, like Ann Bernstein, who wrote for Daria on MTV. And so there were good good people involved with that uh, program. So I'm happy to hear. I'm happy that anybody rem- remembers that, yeah. uh, Viva Pinata. And, I, yeah, I, I would, where's Viva Pinata the movie? Bring that know. game back, you know? People are still clamoring for Viva Pinata to come back in some shape or form. So you're not the only one. I'm not the only one. And when it come, came to Fergie, I also saw a bit of myself in him when the f- show first came out. Because in my school, there was a swimming program. I was terrified of swimming. I never wanted to get into the water or take off my life jacket as the program progressed. And I, I saw myself in Fergie where it's like, it's really not that big a deal, but it felt like just death to me. It's like, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to go in the pool. I don't want to learn how to swim and get wet, you know? Right. You know, you know initially that character, yeah, that was a big thing at the, in the very beginning with Fergie where it, it, he, there was a lot of fear, right, mm-hmm. with going to the party. So I could see where that would be very relatable for, because everybody has fears about, every, you know, everything in life. There's, yeah. you know, um, there are plenty of things I didn't want to do in school too. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that character was very much um he wasn't the lead of the show like you said there were four leads but that was a big part of that program was the fergie's fear as it went on and i don't know if it was the writers influencing the actors or the actors influencing the writers but fergie got weirder yes as the show (laughs) progressed so uh, he did start out like, you know, anything to avoid a party. And then like into the second season, it was like, you know, <laughs> not only am I not going to a party, I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> so he's, he's, he suddenly became uh, a, a little manic and crazed, you know, which was a lot of fun to play. The one that I really like is uh, the racing one uh-huh. where he had, uh, he had his cousin or something, Flex Fudge Hog, uh-huh. and they had this race that they were going to do. And Fergie sets his own grandmother up <laughs> as a a prop to slow down the race. And it winds up with the grandmother being destroyed or disemboweled or whatever yeah. <laughs> happens with the pinata. And Fergie, like, runs by and, you know, he's like, so long, sucker! And then he goes, hi, Grandma! And then <laughs> zips out of frame. And that's like one of my favorite moments in that entire show. And, and there's a show filled with great, wonderful moments and great at, I mean, from everybody. I mean, I thought everybody really stepped it up on that program. It was just wonderful. It was a tremendous cast. The, the, the episode that really stands out in my mind is one called Candy Bullism. Where Fergie, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. he, he gets like a chocolate bunny and he poses it off as his cousin so he doesn't have to share it with his friends at the dance. He eats the thing. Everyone thinks he's a cannibal. Next thing you know, he's in court, a la Hannibal Lecter, tied up to everything. It's like, I'm not an animal, right. I'm a pinata. And then his final judgment is him getting shot to the moon via catapult. And then he finally has to fess up as he's being launched onto the catapult. And he has like a huge, a super great breakdown that sounds like something you could hear in like a serious crime drama where it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't want to share. Right. I know I was selfish, but she was just chocolate. Right. <laughs> it's like, this is yeah. so good. Come on, guys, let me go. I don't want to live on the moon. Any last words? Yes. And this was a chocolate bunny comb. I didn't want to share. I'm sorry. I was selfish, but she was just chocolate. Sorry, I couldn't hear you over all that racket.
second. Fire! <laughs> Dudes, this is a receipt for a large chocolate body coat. <gasps> Um, as the presiding judge, I think I speak for everyone when I say, oops. When you guys get to flex your muscles, you are insane. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, so much fun to do. And I, I remember liking a part where he's having an inner monologue, which is, I can't do it. I can't, but I must. I have to. You know, he was going back and forth, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, that was a, that was a, that stood out. I mean, that's a strange concept because I think he's licking all over it. I mean, yeah. everything about that is very disturbing. <laughs> yeah, and it is cannibalism because he. I mean, I guess the pinata is made of something or other, but he's filled with candy. So. There are all sorts of weirdness going on in that particular episode. Yeah, I was when I was rewatching it again. I mean, I had a pretty good, vivid memory of it. It was like, whoa, how did we get here? <laughs> but I <Yeah>. love that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it would fly today on television. I don't. I'm surprised standards and practice. That's strange. You know, it's like One Piece. I think they came down really hard on us, but for some reason, Viva Pinata, all sorts of crazy stuff was allowed to, like, fly, you know, right past the censors for whatever reason. Like when Fergie said, like, oh, fudge for the first little bit. Exactly. I, I picked that up when I was a little kid, and I maybe said that for, like, five minutes before my mom said, stop saying that. Don't say that. <laughs> Where did you hear I that? I can't believe it. Here I was, a bad influence on children. <laughs> but I was like, well, mom, it's from a show with pinatas. Like, well, that makes sense. But still, don't don't say that. <laughs> like, right. okay. But it was quick. She put a pin in that real quick. <laughs> How did we get away with these things? It's amazing. I don't know. It's ins Maybe it's just because they're pinatas and things can happen to them. Even in the credits, it says, like, many pinatas were horribly beaten during the creation of this series. Right. I always noticed that. Maybe it's a case where the, the, the network was like, oh, but look, it's so cute. We don't yeah. have to watch this show. It's so, it's, it's adorable. It's for little tiny tots. There's no, there's no, everything they do, I'm sure, on this program is fine. Yeah. Let's just really come down on one piece. That's the one that's, pro that's a real problem. Yeah, Meanwhile, all the edgy stuff, all the stuff that was really out of control was happening on Viva Pinata, <laughs> but nobody watched. No, people, people Except people in Canada. Watch. You, you folks in Canada, I guess, really liked it. We and like I think in, in Europe, I think it was on in Europe for a, a long time. And I know that the series is out, maybe it's in Argentina, where you can, it's dubbed, of course, but there is an option to watch the English language version, and apparently the entire series is out on DVD wow. somewhere in South America. Yep. I need to find that then. <laughs> Now, there was another thing, like, going off on something other to four kids. There was another thing you guys did where you guys sang the national anthem. D do you remember that at all? Like, nope. Your, your characters all <laughs> sang the national anthem, and I just vividly remember a version where you sang as Fergie. There was all original animation to it, but, yeah, that one is lost to time. But, yeah. Wow, I don't remember that. I, I mean, the only singing I remember... We all had to sing the theme song, yeah. which was done in unison. I just remember having to go, Viva, Viva, and yada, 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 like over and over again you, uh, as, as part of the theme. Yeah. You also said uh, in the very first Viva Pinata intro, you started out with, it's party time. But I remember that. And I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> well, I think that and the character changed from the very first episode. It was a deeper voice. Yeah. It got higher as it went on because it just became more comfortable to do a higher voice. But And another, another big influence on that character, or at least my voice for it, was Joe Besser. If you ever see the Abbott and Costello sitcom there's a character on that show called stinky mm -hmm. played by joe besser who is this grown man who would dress like a small child and he was like the most irritating person in the world <laughs> so if you ever see it and his big thing was stop it you're gonna make me crazy so there was there's a little bit of that going on with uh, with Fergie Funchog. The good used to be I could sling the lead real good. The bad, tell me, El Sketcho, fastest caricaturist in the West. Oh! The Fergie. Now draw. I don't have a pencil sharpened. <laughs> Viva Pinata later this morning. Yeah, I can definitely hear that. I'll have, I'll have to look that up and then yeah. I'll get back to you on that too. 
Uh, okay. Do you remember, speaking of more obscure things, do you remember a show called uh, Go Go Ricky? Oh, of course. I lo- I liked that. I really enjoyed that show. And it's like, I'm. this is like, it's sort of kind of lost to media up until a few years ago, the four kids dub of it. But Go Go Ricky came on during like a rough time in my life. And it was one of the things that helped me cope. It's like, I was just staying at home. And then I see Go Go Ricky. And it's like, oh, I remember seeing this one time. And then it helped me crack a smile like the day after I was going through something and you were, you were like Bobo Ricky and Daco Ricky, I believe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Cause I enjoyed that program. I enjoyed that doing that show too. And probably those are my two favorites of Viva Pinata and Go Go Ricky. I actually, they brought it back, but they recast it. So I'm not in it anymore, but I, I think it is back or they, they do webisodes or something yeah, uh, with an English dub, but I, they didn't bring me back for it. But, you know, again, I, I, I bring my bad luck to the project. <laughs> and, uh, and so they go, we want this to succeed. We got to get rid of that guy. We only got to get him for uh, old men and jerks. And there are no old men and jerks in Go Go Riki or Smash Riki or whatever it's called now. <laughs> But yeah, I enjoy, I enjoyed doing that show. Bobo Riki was another, you know, I think I did basically him as Bing Crosby. Ah. So everything was, wow, this is wonderful. I'm just going to stand over here and boy, what a beautiful guard. Bobo Riki's quotable quote. <sighs> well, shuck my corn and call me Colonel. You smell rapper than a skunk in a junkyard rolling around in sewage eating onions. Daco, how about a swig of honey? I asked for a haircut, that was more like a shave. We don't need no fancy schmancy strategery. You must learn to walk before you can dance. Make way for the Bobo Express! That was that character. Oh. Um, and then uh, Doc Riki was, I was thinking of Niles on Frasier, mm-hmm. David Hyde Pierce. So it was sort of like, it's fantastic. What a beautiful day. I can't wait to go outside. <laughs> those, those kind of things are, uh, those kind of characters are fun. It's Go Go Riki's Go Go Wiki. Big O Riki is a big time celebrity. At least that's what he tells everyone. A master magician, master of ceremonies, and master storyteller. There is one thing that this showman extraordinaire can't seem to master, his memory. So I enjoyed uh, that show. That yeah. was like a easy, easy peasy work. We did a lot of singing on that program. There was yeah. a great guy who wrote music for it. And uh, I enjoyed any any opportunity to sing was fun as well. I think I might have heard you singing in like some backing vocals, like during a transition scene or something like that. And but yeah, there was a lot of great songs in that show. I'd say it was like one of uh, old four, classic four kids is like one of their last great hurrahs. I would say. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, let's see. Do you remember, like, now some, again, some more obscure stuff. Do you remember shows like Pat and Stan or Thumb Wrestling Federation? Sure. <laughs> Pat and Stan was, that was that French uh, short or a series of shorts. And Pat and Stan now, when I watch it, I wish I was better in it because I, I see it and I go, God, I wish this is actually good. And I wish I was better in it than I was because I'm doing a kind of Bugs Bunny variation in that, you know, it's like, get over here. Come on. You know, it's that character. Yeah. And with a bit of a Brooklynese thing. And I, I just wish, yeah, I just wish I did a better job on that one. I think, um, I forget who the who else was in it because we, we rarely ever work together or see each other. It was all everything's all done individually and then put together later. Uh, Dan, um, Dan Green was the the hippo character. Yes, yes, I thought he was fantastic in that. If, and I'm you know eh, I'm okay as a straight man in that, but um, yeah, I, I wish I was better in the in those shorts. <laughs> Can I please, please give you your birthday present now, please? All right. That's very thoughtful of you. Yes! <laughs> <Woo-hoo-hoo>! yeah. Happy birthday! <laughs> Take it easy. You're slobbering all over me. Hmm? What am I supposed to do with this? I thought for your birthday you could make me a fuzzy vest or a rainbow scarf or a hat with a big pink pom-pom. 
all new outerwear. This is so exciting. Isn't he thoughtful? I think at that time, we had to do like a ton of them mm -hmm. in a short space of time. And I feel like my performance is, I sound irritated because I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think because we have to just crank out so many of them. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, Thumb Wrestling Federation. Yes. Yeah, I played the big time. Yes, I love the big time. Right, which I've, that's the show I've never seen. I don't. I have no idea what that even. I, it's it's real thumbs, right? It's not animation. It's real right? thumbs, like some even that's some right. of the actors had their actual thumbs in there. Okay. Yeah. And I wasn't the big. I I wasn't the big. I wasn't the original voice of the big time. I don't think. And then I think someone replaced me. I, I'm not I sure. That yeah. that happened a lot. Yeah. Hey, you're wrinkling the big time spread. What up? Hey, the big time fans want him to look good. Ain't that right, ladies? Get him, girl! <laughs> ladies, please, I'd love to stay, but I got a jet. A jet pack? Again? Man, how do you even put that on so fast? I also do, I do have the episode that you were the big time in also on tape, but uh, also to say that uh, when you, when I found out you were Stan, I originally thought that was like Sean Schemmel because you guys are very similar in like sort of a mid-range kind of way. And just, just, at least that's what I think. Yeah. I mean, well, I know that on behind the voice actors, there's a, there are a lot of things that are, well, I mean, they do a good job, I'm sure, but there are times where. I'm confused with someone else or someone will. And I think it, there was something with Sean that I was confused in. It wasn't that though. Yeah. Um, and Stan is the dog, right? Yeah, Pat Stan is the is hippo. The okay. Right. Okay. It's been a long time, That's but okay. I know we did, we did a ton of them. We did so many of them. Yeah. And there was even a movie, but then they did a movie with English voices. Yes. This is what I remember. So, they, there was a UK dub. Yeah. And when I saw the UK dub, I was so impressed with that acting. And I thought, oh, I should have really done it like that. I, I should have done it like the, uh, the whoever was doing the UK stand rather than what I was doing, which was, okay, Stan. You know, it wasn't, uh, there wasn't much range in, in that. And then I saw the UK one. I thought, oh, this is so much better. I should have underplayed it. <laughs> but... You know, it is what it is, and I, people still remember it. I, it's still up on YouTube. I think there's, like, all of those clips are up on YouTube. Yeah, I found out about those guys from, like, someone made a thing on YouTube, like, back in 2005, where they took, like, The Lion Sleeps Tonight and put it in th th those characters, and then when I saw Pat and Stan on, like, the CW, I was like, those, wait, this is a real thing? <laughs> yeah, it was shorts, and then it became, like, a show. Like, it was literally a you know, a 10 minute cartoon or a 20 minute thing. And I don't know which came first, but I know we did a bunch of shorts. Yeah. You know, maybe they're like a minute long or something. So, I think they ran in between other shows on Saturday morning, yes, like interstitials in between. Yeah. Right. During the commercial breaks and all that. Uh, but a uh, couple other quick movies before we get into the quick radio stint. Uh, do you remember uh, Jungle Emperor Leo, like that Kimba the White Lion thing? Yes, you were you were the parrot. You actually get first billing in that movie as the parrot, and he sounds just like Fergie Fudgehog, actually. Right, but you know what? I was trying to do Gilbert Gottfried because he had done the parrot, the parrot in the uh, Aladdin, ah. um, and I and, and there was something about, and I think that's what was talked about was uh, to do something along those lines. <laughs> should pretty much take care of your feathers. Now listen up. The secret to flying is all on the wings. You gotta flap to fly. Flap, 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 flap. Do it like you mean it. Flap, 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 flap. I am, I am. Oh, clearly you're not paying any attention. Now do you want to fly or do you want to fall? Flap them like you got a pair. Flap, 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 flap. So a lot of these voices that maybe people associate with me is really me trying to do someone else and failing at it. So I wind up having my own character sound, <laughs> you know, like Fergie Fudgehog is Jerry Lewis meets Joe Besser. And, you know, it probably doesn't sound like either of them, really. And, yeah, so I could see that. There's also another character. There was a show called 
chaotic. Yes. And I was a cat that also sounded like Fergie. <laughs> 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 there was another. There was another one where that's what they wanted. So you know, yeah. I was like, oh, Fergie lives again, except now he's serious. <laughs> 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 now he doesn't crack jokes and he's not crazy. He's he's uh, he's into like being a ninja or something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there was also another movie. It's called Donkey King. I, it's just like a recent thing. It's just making the rounds with a lot of popular uh, yes. people right now. That was just another day for you, I take it. Yeah, I think I did that in like an hour and a half or, or whatever. I I play like uh, like a bear, a, or something. a bear, a father bear. Yeah, basically, it's as, as I become old and decrepit. I don't have to really disguise my voice anymore. So I just became, you know, well, son, stand over here. Just basically my own speaking voice, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't remember much about it, but I, I do have a moment where I say, we need to all get along or something like that. Yeah, so you know? something about politics or something. But, right, right. Yeah, but it, it's kind of similar to your voice to... Uh, the character in Sonic called Espio the Chameleon. Do you remember him too? Yeah, a lot of people like that uh, character. And it's funny because it's, it is similar. I think I only have about like four voices and it's the same ones in all the all the shows, except that was like a whisper because the direction I was given was to try to sound like Michael Keaton's Batman. <laughs> so, cause, so that's how I did it. It was sort of, we need to go over here and be quiet. <laughs> you know, he, he just never raised his voice you know he was never uh he was just always chill that character so which is fine by me but you know the the thing that people don't mention that i did with four kids was their commercials yes so i love your commercials I, right so the so the video game stuff like enter now and get your chance to win a blah, 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 blah. like those i really enjoyed i wish i could do those all the time those were the most fun to do Halloween sweepstakes. 13 lucky winners have a chance to win a set of 10 freaky pets. Many will enter. 13 will win. Head to CW4Kids.com by November 5th for a chance to win. Watch the CW4Kids all morning long and enter the hair-raising Halloween sweepstakes if you hair. But did I mean dare? <laughs> Those were great because, again, I thought it was like Sean Shema when I heard them, but then I was, when I did a more research, I was like, no, that's that's Dave Wills. And I just remember one where you did like a Christmas, you did a Halloween one and you did a Christmas one. And I remember at the time you was like, uh, enter the sweepstakes here. So go ho ho to tunesai.com. But that's always stuck out in my mind. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, Sean might have done some of them, too, because yeah. I think we were going back and forth. We I always call it the Burt Ward voice. Because on Batman, Burt Ward was always, holy, we have to do something, Batman, you know? And so I was always doing that voice. And they, I think four kids referred to it as cool older brother. But <laughs> I always thought of it as Burt Ward. Yeah. Because everything was, yeah, enter now and your chance to win is coming up. <laughs> Yeah, that just sounds like that just sounds like like Sean Shemmel's character, like Goku from Dragon right. Ball Z. That totally yep. sounds like it. It's nine, 90s, or, I mean, even though that's the 2000s, but 90s to 2000s advertising voices aimed at young people are all the same, all kind of the same guy. You know, it's all sort of, here's your chance, enter now, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, you enter, you <laughs> right, win. right, exactly. Yeah, that was I, I, that was the tagline. Many will enter, few will win. All right, yeah. <laughs> Come to Yu-Gi-Oh! Nation and discover a world that could be ruled by you. Rush to DuelToRule.com and enter the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel to Rule sweepstakes. You can win a trip for four to the Yu-Gi-Oh! National Championships. Duel a Yu-Gi-Oh! National Master. Design an official Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card and become ruler of Yu-Gi-Oh! Nation. Go to DuelToRule.com by April 10th and enter for your chance to win. Many will enter, one will win. Get your parents' permission before going online. Come to DuelToRule.com and you can rule Yu-Gi-Oh! Nation. So let's see if we can squeeze just a, a bit of radio stuff in here. Uh, I just wanted to to say I, I mean i know you already know this but you got a show called the vintage rock and pop shop and i tuned into it the, the first time i was like oh i just want to see what this guy is up to and uh but i've fallen in love with the thing i tune into it whenever i can on a sunday whenever i'm just working at the computer or just doing something in the garden and 
I just I love all kinds of music, but I have a serious soft spot for the kind of music you'd hear right out of something like you would hear in a Disney film or Warner Brothers with high swills, a fun factor, tons of them tell a story, which I love. And I had never heard like two songs that stick out in my mind are like This Old House by Rosemary Clooney and the Rosemary Clooney version. Oh, yes. And, yeah. Uh, Roger Boom was a great little song, too. It sounds like something that my mom would sing oh, to, yes. <laughs> to scare the yeah. crap out of me before I go to sleep. But uh, yeah, right. I, loved, I hadn't heard those songs before listening to your show. And I was like, dude. I love these songs. These are great. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad you're listening, uh, and I hope you continue to listen when you can. And uh, it's a lot of fun to do. I've been on the radio doing shows like that um, for, I guess, over thirty years now. Thirty just sad. years, probably. Yeah, you've yeah. had pretty good luck there, all things considered. Yeah. Well, I mean. You know, it's all community radio. <laughs> so I, I did, I mean, I did do, uh, I was on uh, satellite radio for, I guess, about seven years. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like I like I did with four kids, you know, I, I, I went to satellite radio and put my stink on that. And, uh, and then uh, Sirius went under and then merged with XM. So again, I was bringing my good luck to uh, any project that I'm involved in. <laughs> but... The uh, the vintage rock and pop shop is, uh, you know, I have celebrity interviews on there, celebrities from the past, yeah. but it is a big celebration of of the past and sort of, you know, familiar songs from the time period, but also obscure cuts that you wouldn't normally hear yeah. somewhere else. So, and even even my hosting on that program is almost like a character. Yeah, there's like <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. What were you gonna say? I was just going to say, you know, it's not, it's, 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 uh, you know, if you can imagine, this is what Captain Falcon would do on his day off. When he wasn't <laughs> racing, he would be playing Rosemary Clooney records <laughs> on the radio. You know, I love that woman. She's fantastic. <laughs> Bump. Yep. The Cordettes with Lollipop 1958 going out to Malik. Right? Is it Malik or is it Malik? I apologize for mispronouncing your name, potentially. <laughs> but I'm glad you're listening nonetheless. Get your pizzas here! All right, folks. The big question is, was there rock and roll in Great Britain before the Beatles, ladies and gentlemen? Let's find out. That's what I appreciate, because we had, like, uh, up here in Canada, we had, like, things in between our TV shows where we had, like, uh, they were called PJs, program jockeys, and they would just talk and do things and do silly things and do interviews and things like that. And that's what it reminds me a lot of, where it's not just the music. It's also some guy who, again, has a little too much power and is just doing crazy stuff during whatever he's doing that week. Like talking about his day, gripes of the week, just weird old news and trivia and things like that. that I love that stuff. Oh, good. Glad you like that. Yeah, well, there's always something to irritate me, so I always have a gripe of the week. Uh, today it was double parking, because mm -hmm. I just can't stand people that do that, and I feel that they need to be punished. Yes. And uh, not that I don't want to be the one implementing the punishment, but, you know, if I'm ever elected to any kind of position, that's going to be my platform. I'm going to run on publicly shaming and really punishing people who double park. I would send them yeah. to the moon via catapult, honestly. Yes, I would send them to the moon if I could. Um, A dungeon or, for the rest of their days. <laughs> right, something. or I, I. In fact, I might even bring back the R-long line, you know. take <laughs> well, I don't even remember what it is. Pay the cash and take out the trash. What is it? Uh, it's if you can't pay the cash, then you're out with the trash. If you can't pay the cash, then you're out with the trash. And feel free to quote me. That's fine. Also, Big Steve, also fine. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, but uh, yeah, I, I I had to bring up the 50s stuff. I actually went to a 50s diner just yesterday for my birthday. And the funny thing is, it's just right by my house. This is like my gripe of like the decade or something. Because every time I try and go there, it's never open. But it was open yesterday. And it was so great. Oh, well, that's good. I, yeah, I could even send you the pictures or something if you're interested in seeing what it looks like. But uh, Yeah, I'm jealous that you have a cool place to go to because around here we just have Burger King. So <laughs> I'm excited that you have a place that you can go to that you can indulge in uh, some nostalgia because yeah. we don't have anything like that here in the uh, Northeast. 
we have. Uh, so I, whereabouts in Canada are you? If you don't, I don't. You, I know you don't want to give away your location because it's the internet and you'll have uh, crazy people. That's but are you uh, are you closer to the? Uh, are you on the east? Are you on the west? I'm actually uh, up in like Niagara Falls, actually on the Canadian side. Oh, okay. So, All yeah, right. It's so not terribly far away. No, no, no. You're not too far. Away. But yeah, they're, okay. they're, they're cool. They got like an Elvis shake, which is like peanut butter, banana, and something or other, strawberries, and in there. Wow. Yeah, it's a really cool. If you ever, if you ever happen to be up in like Niagara Falls, Canada, and and if you can find them, they're they're really cool. Well, if I ever a have a honeymoon, or b because isn't that where people go on their honeymoon? They go to Niagara Falls. It seems like a strange location to go, but um, and then. Uh, or if I ever decide I want to go over the falls in a barrel, that's the other thing that <laughs> people, how did that even start? You know, who comes up with that idea? It's like, I want to go over the falls. It's like, nobody says they want to go over the falls in a raft, right? You know, which, or I don't want to go over the falls in a boat. I don't want to go over the falls in a submarine, but some, somehow barrel that became a thing. I think the guy at least one person survived. So, you know, your chance, given your luck, I, I'd say your chances are pretty all right. So, you know, let, I'll put the disclaimer here at the end. I am personally saying do not go to Niagara Falls and try to <laughs> go over in a barrel. I don't think personally it's a good idea. I think actually they will arrest you uh, if you attempt to do something like that. Don't they try to prevent people from yeah, uh, leaping into the falls? Yeah, totally. They do. But uh, so as we well, close... this, this interview, this interview took a dark turn. That's OK. <laughs> we, we didn't we're not endorsing it. <laughs> oh no 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 not endorsing it you know just discussing it there yeah you go. yeah it's fine but uh as you usually close out your show you usually ask you, you usually say you get like one slice pepperoni one slice sausage but what's the best pizza you've ever had if i'm ever in the area of beautiful teaneck new jersey what, what's the best pizza you've ever had you know the best boy the best pizza i ever had Whew. I couldn't even tell you because it's probably some dive in the city. Mm -hmm. And it was probably one of those places where I didn't even look where I was going. There was a, a craze uh, maybe about 10 years ago where people were, all these pizzerias were having dollar slices. Yeah. And it was a big thing, 99 cent slices. And I, I don't think they do that anymore. But some of the best pizza I ever had in my life were those dollar slices at these little, you know, rundown shops that look like they're covered in grime mm -hmm. and there's probably all manner of disease percolating <laughs> in the, uh, on the shelves and on the utensils. And uh, yeah, somewhere, I want to say somewhere around uh, in the Hell's Kitchen area, mm -hmm. there was a pizzeria that I went into and I had, I had a slice of Sicilian that I remember being particularly good. I think the Board of Health closed this place down. Uh -huh. But um, at that moment, I think some of that, you know, some of that sanitation that was on my pizza probably made it taste a little better. So <laughs> I'm sure if they tasted it, they wouldn't have, they would have had second thoughts about closing it. Right, exactly. You know what? You know, these guys got all sorts of violations, but this is a damn good slice of Sicilian. Yeah, so maybe no we should just look we'll just look the other way, you know. No one goes to a restaurant for atmosphere. <laughs> they go for food. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just just brush those cockroaches off the chair and have a seat. Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> right. If it, if it looks like a bean or pepperoni, I'm fine with it. It's playing the part. <laughs> Put it on the pizza. Cover it with cheese. They'll never know. Yeah, it's like it'll, it's all squirming, anyways. <laughs> 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 well, this has been this has been a great time. I'm sorry we didn't have more time to delve into stuff, but I think I knocked through all the questions that I had. But uh, is there anything that I didn't ask that you wanted me to? <laughs> no, I mean I think we hit all the all the major. Uh... <laughs> highlights <laughs> such as they <laughs> such as they are i mean uh, i can't think of I, I barely remember anything so you know if you bring them up that that's going to be the first i've thought about them since i've done them so uh this was good i strolled down memory lane uh you know sort of confused and uh trying to remember what i did 
mm-hmm. not even sure if I did stuff. You know, I guess you'll have to hear me. Uh, you know, play me a clip or something, and then I'll go. Oh yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to do that. But uh, let's see. Uh, if 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 uh, I'm just gonna plug. You know, do you want to plug uh, your stuff? If anyone wants to reach you somewhere. So oh, well, I mean, they can just on Facebook. There's uh, the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop. I I never did a voice actor page i know people have done that i probably should do that but i wouldn't even know what to put on it since i don't even remember (laughs) what i did um and i don't know what what would come out of it other than you know people asking me why did you suck as captain falcon (laughs) but uh maybe i'll do that one of these days i'll i'll surprise everybody by uh putting together the uh david wills voice actor tribute page and then people will go to it and assume i've either died or (laughs) um or that it's the other guy uh from uh adult swim you know and i'll i'll get thousands i'll think i'll be convinced that i have thousands of followers and it turns out they'll start asking me questions about aqua teen hunger force yeah (laughs) say oh yeah i was in that (laughs) i made that (laughs) yeah i you know and i I was like you know what maybe i was i mean i don't even remember i I can't remember what I did do. Yeah, just, so. just own up to it or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, this has been this has been so great. Uh, I was wondering if you could uh, close out the show like how you do on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop, but as Fergie Fudgehog, if that's okay. So okay, so well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to get my two slices of pizza. One slice pepperoni, one slice sausage, and nobody's gonna stop me. <laughs> Have a good night. Goodbye. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that works. That works. And so yeah, thanks, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. So uh, until next time, sayonara for now. I I just took your thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, you did. Hey, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. <laughs> copyright. Copyright. <laughs> He's stealing from me, Paulie. I can't believe he would do something like that. <laughs> Now, that's where things would end if this show was anything resembling conventional, but uh, we got some bonus audio for you guys, so uh, enjoy. That's that's the most I've done, Fergie, since uh, for the past, I don't know, how many years ago was that? 20 years ago? No, not Not 20. Maybe like 2009 is probably when the last episode was. So I'm going to say, yeah, at least like 10, 11 years. All right, 10, 11 years. 10, 20. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad, though. (laughs) <laughs> I have to get in shape. I got to get in Fergie shape. I eat a lot of chocolate, lay down. <laughs> That's how I get into Fergie shape. You know, but that was still pretty good for someone who is apparently not in Fergie shape. That was that was better than I could do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, as I uh, stampede towards old age, the voices will get more dificult to do, I'm sure. Or maybe that that's how I will sound when I get really old. I'll just, I'll be like, nurse! Hello, nurse! Yeah, I wet myself! You know, that'll be, that's how I'll sound. <laughs> I can totally hear that. in the be- And I mean that in the best possible way, of course. Oh, of course, you know, because if you're going to soil yourself, it's, you know, try to make, try to make it funny and yeah. entertaining for the other make person. Make it memorable. Yeah. You better All right. be funny. <laughs> yeah, don't be, don't wet yourself and be boring. That would yeah. be the worst part. Be memorable. <laughs> but uh anyways, this was this was so great. I'm 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 very happy that you lowered your standards to get to chat with some schmuck today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I mean I, I that could be referring to me. Uh you know, you, no, you've no, lowered no. your you've you've had great you've had great uh, names on your on your show. <laughs> you, these names from the past that you've mentioned. You know, now since I've been on the program, your your show is going to get canceled now. This is gonna yeah, be I just want one. you to know this will be the last one because YouTube will pull it, and then people will talk about what was the turning point in his life? What was the pivotal <laughs> moment where everything went south for him? I think it was when he had the guy who played Fergie Funchog on the program. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, that yeah, that's that was the end. That was Obviously. the end right there. Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, I I won't keep you any longer. But again, if you ever want to do something like this again, not sure why you would. Uh, yeah, I'd be down for it. But uh, yeah, it's been great. Thanks for yeah, my it. pleasure. You've had such a huge integral part 
in you know shaping the person that me and even my brother are today with our ridiculous humor with you and all your friends and all the writers and things like that so yeah i just wanted to say that you you guys are all fantastic well, it's really nice of you, and I, I, I certainly do appreciate that. And if your mother's listening, I apologize for everything that happened uh, to uh, turn your sons into what they've become. You know, <laughs> it's uh, just really unfortunate that we had any kind of influence. And, uh, you know, when you heard, oh, fudge, yeah, I mean, you were right. Uh, he had no business uh, going around saying that. Oh, I'm, I might just have to put this in the final video too, if if that's a, this is help. This is gold. Sure. <laughs> that's sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hey there folks, thanks again for watching, I really hope you enjoyed what you saw, or listened, or whatever. If you did, feel free to give this video a like, share with a friend, subscribe, check out my social media pages, my Patreon page, all that good stuff that I always go on about at the end. And once again, a very special thanks to David Ghosty Wills for taking the time to come and talk with me. If you guys enjoyed listening to him, then be sure to check out his show, The Vintage Rock and Pop Shop on WFDUFM. It's streams live almost every Sunday afternoon from noon till 3 Eastern Standard Time. And even if you're not in the New Jersey area, you can reach them on their website, they've got an app, there's many ways to do it. And take my word for it, it is a real fun listen. And with all that said, I'll see you guys next time. Once again, thanks for joining me on this little event that I like to call Pokemon. Catch you later! We're sure you'll agree. Say it, Piñatas are the one for me. One more time. Say it, Piñatas are the one for me.